Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In my last video, I discussed how we can write AI agents using semantic kernels in .NET. Today, I'm going to talk about another very interesting topic when it comes to AI agents. It's called Model Context Protocol. As a .NET developer, we know LLMs are powerful and also we can create agents and tools, but they have some fundamental problem. They are essentially isolated. So if we talk about an agent and the LLM is working with different tools, so an LLM can work with a file tool, a database tool, an API based tool, or some other tools but they are trapped behind information silo. They cannot talk to our database or company API or local files without the tools. And for fixing that, we have to write custom integration, one for every tool and one for every AI model. So if you think about this, if you are dealing with multiple tools, we get into this M by N problem where multiple models need to talk to multiple tools. And this M by N problem, it's a maintenance nightmare that does not scale. But what if there was a standard what if instead of custom connector, we have a USB-C port for AI? And that is what the model context protocol or MCP is all about. It is an open standard designed to connect any AI application to any external tool or data sources securely and reliably. This standard was suggested or created by Anthropic and it's been open sourced since then. For developers, a better analogy is to think about it as a language server protocol for AI. Now for the model context protocol, let's talk about the core architectural concept that it provides. So the model context protocol consists of three distinct important concepts. The MCP host, the MCP client, and the MCP server, or the model context protocol host, client, and server. So the MCP host is your application, like an agent built with semantic kernel, or even Visual Studio Code itself. This can act as an MCP host. And then we have the MCP server. The MCP server is the tool or data source. This is something which we are going to build using C Sharp. And it exposes capabilities of our existing softwares or system. And then finally, we have the MCP client. The MCP client is a connector that lives within the host and it is meant to talk to a individual MCP server. So one MCP client will talk to only one MCP server, but the MCP host can have multiple MCP client, each talking to its own dedicated MCP server. Now, when it comes to the processing of how this whole interaction between MCP host and MCP server works, is that this process is a stateful handshake. The host connects and for the connection, it calls the initialize method or initialize call. It makes the initialize call. And then it asks the server, what tools do you have? Using the tool slash list request, and the server responds with the JSON list of tools. 
and then the host can execute those tools based on the user request using tools slash call request and then it will return the tool response back to the MCP host. So this essentially is the workflow. Now let's build a C sharp application using model context protocol to expose some server functionality through MCP server. So for that purpose, the NuGet package that we have to install is model context protocol dot ASP.NET core. And this is currently in preview. So you have to make sure you include the pre-release to install this. Once it is installed, you can use the standard create builder web application dot create builder. And then you do builder dot services dot add MCP server. This is going to add the model context protocol server to the services collection with the default options. And then we do with HTTP transport. So something that I did not cover before is with respect to the transport, there are two transport mechanism. One is STDIO or standard IO and second one is streamable HTTP. The difference between STDIO and streamable HTTP is streamable HTTP is something which we'll probably end up using most of the time. It is something which can, when we build a streamable HTTP, it's essentially a API which can be hosted in a cloud service provider like Azure or AWS. And then it can be accessed from anywhere from a MCP host or an AI agent. Whereas STDIO, mechanism of hosting, what it does it, it loads the service in the same process as the MCP host. So it gets loaded on the client machine where the MCP host is running. And then it talks to that through standard IO. So the standard IO is going to be much more faster because it's loaded in the same server or same machine as the host, but it will have a lot of limitation, as you can understand. Also distributing IMCP server through STDIO is not going to be very operationally feasible and optimal. Hence, for this example, I am using the streamable HTTP, which basically adds, when I do with HTTP transport, it adds the service necessary to handle the streamable HTTP transport for MCP. And then I'm using with tools from assembly, which basically is going to look around the assembly and find any tools based on a specific attribute of the class and function. And then finally I do a build. And then app.map MCP, which essentially adds the path slash SSE and slash message which can be used by the client, which I'm going to show a little bit later. And I do app.run. And when it comes to tool, again, here also we are creating tool like the semantic kernel, but the tool itself is hosted outside of the AI agent. That is the key. So here we have a tool, a weather tool. And here I'm using the attribute called MCB server tool type, the weather tool. And then this is the main method. This method just finds the hard-coded weather here, which I have just for mock example. Based on the city, it finds the weather and returns it. That's what it does. And here I am adding the attribute MCP server tool, giving it a name and a description. And this is what will be ultimately exposed by the MCP server back to an MCP host or an agent. And this name is what will be given along with this description. So the name and description is very critical for this scenario to make sure that the agent can understand the need for this particular tool and use it appropriately. Now, after looking into this code, you might be thinking, what is the difference between the standard 
tool calling given by agent versus this MCP? Why not use tool calling itself? And there is a critical distinction. The tool calling or the function calling is monolithic. Your tool code lives and runs inside of your AI app. So if you have to use the same tool code across multiple system or multiple AI agents, it's very hard. If you use a MCP server, then it is hosted and can be used by any number of AI agents. So this gives two things. One thing is reusability. As I mentioned, any AI app can use our MCP server, not just the one we built it for. It's right ones and use everywhere mechanism. And the second thing the MCP provides is isolation and security. If our tool crashes, for example, it will take down the entire AI agent. Whereas if the MCP server crashes, it is not going to take down the AI agent. It is going to just impact or throw an error not available and AI agent will just move on. So that's essentially the two fundamental advantage we get with MCP. It's a distributed system. So now let me run this application and then show how it works. So the application is up and running. It's running on this particular port. Now I'll open Visual Studio Code. And in Visual Studio Code, I have configured this MCP server in mcp.json. And for that, for configuring, we can do Control Shift P. It's going to get here. We can type MCP. And then it will come with like add server option. If we do that, if we say HTTP or STDIO, once we click on that, it's going to open up this MCP JSON. And I already given it a name, whether MCP and the URL. Now I'm going to start this server because it's not starting. And you can see it started and it discovered one tool. And now if we, if we go here, we can see this process that I was showing before. First, it made an initialized call. And then after that, it called the tools slash list to get the tools that are available. Now, let me ask this a question. Now I'm using the Visual Studio as a MCP host, and I'm going to ask the question here. I'm going to ask, what is the weather of New York? And then now it is going to try to find, and you can see that it figured out this get underscore weather, that was the name of my MCP tool. And this is the weather MCP. And it is saying that the input parameter is going to be city New York. It figured out though I gave the New York a small letter, it figured out that N and Y has to be uppercase because the AI is working here. And, and by the way, I'm using Visual Studio Code with GitHub Copilot, hence it is working as a MCP host or an AI agent. And now I'm going to say allow. Once I do allow, it's going to make the call back to server. We can expand it we can see. This is the input and this is the output, city temperature condition. And from here it's saying the current weather in New York is sunny with a temperature of 22, 22 degree centigrade. I did not give whether the weather type is centigrade or Fahrenheit, it just choose centigrade but we can provide the weather type also as a part of the response, which I don't have in my code right now. So this is how it works end to end. Now we saw how easy it is to create an MCP server in C Sharp and then use it into an MCP tool or AI agent. In my future video, I'm going to show how to use this with custom AI agent using semantic kernel. Now the next question you have it, what is there for .NET Stack? So as I said, we can use semantic kernel. So semantic kernel can be used as a host. It can consume MCP server as dynamic plugins. 
we get the semantic kernel's powerful planning and memory plus the MCP open to ecosystems of tools. And most of enterprise is built on RESTful API and gRPCs. So we don't want to recreate every single thing as tools. And this is where also MCP comes very handy because MCP does not replace our ASP.NET Core APIs, but it becomes the AI native facade in front of them. Our MCP server can expose a simple tool which can then internally call multiple REST APIs or even gRPC services or other existing microservices and then provide the outcome to the AI agent. One final critical point, MCP enables powerful access, which creates powerful risk. The protocol itself is not security solution. Security is our responsibility as implementer. The core principle of MCP is explicit user consent. For example, when I was asking in the Visual Studio Code, the Visual Studio Code makes sure explicitly asking, do you want to make this call to MCP? When I said yes or accept, it went ahead and did that. So the same thing we have to make sure we provide in our AI system. If the AI system is internal, of course, we can, we have to put in guardrail in our MCP server as well as some sort of authentication mechanism that can work between the client and server. For example, the client can pass along the API key or token with the request. As a server developer, we should build safeguard sandboxing and things like that to ensure that the data cannot leak or we can handle attacks coming through prompt injection. So to wrap up, model context protocol is more than just another function calling. It's a new distributed architecture for building scalable and reusable AI agents. For .NET developer, it's the standard that will connect our semantic kernel agent with ASP.NET Core services to a whole new ecosystem of AI tools. That is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.